Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Crafting with Class. The Craft Room mini series continues, but previously on Crafting with Class, day one, we took a look through my craft room with a little craft room tour. On day two, we took a look at how I organize my stamps and dies. For day three, we're going to take a look at how I organize all of my coloring mediums, starting with Copic markers. I store all of my Copic markers in this Deflecto stackable cube. It houses all my Copics as well as the clear color brush markers. This is what it looks like. I have four of them. You'll see that it comes with little clips that you see here and that way you can clip them both horizontally and vertically so they're all one piece that doesn't move around which is great. Another thing that I absolutely love about this organizational tool is its size. This is a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. And as you can see, that is the size that it is. I have almost all the Copics and pretty much all of the Zig markers too. So it is a lot. So this holds a lot in a small footprint and I can see absolutely every color. I love this so much. Next to that, you see my refills for my Copic markers. So I have several of them, although not all of them. I also have a spot for any new tips and things like that. I also have a digital scale that I use so that I don't overfill my markers, but I also use it to make sure I know how much postage to put on my chubby cards. Now, these are the papers that I typically use for Copics. Uh, if I'm going to fussy cut, I'll use the Nina 80 pounds, but my go-to is the Mohawk 110 pound because it is very smooth and the marker colors blend beautifully on that, in my opinion. For the Zig markers, I like to use the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. It blends beautifully on that, especially with the blender pen. And I cut down the size that I need, usually for A2, and I put them in the standard pockets. All right, let's move on to colored pencils. I use this organizer from Totally Tiffany in completely the, the wrong way that you're supposed to. This is what it's supposed to look like, but I've turned it on its side to fit what I need. And so in the first little section, I have all the tools that I use when I use my colored pencils. So I have the blending stamps, the Gamsol in two different types, so in the pen and in the dispenser, the eraser, and also I have the sharpener. And then I have the colored pencils in rainbow order, and I can just pick the color I need and put it back. And as long as it's in the same hue uh, or color family, that's all good. And then I have my intent pencils behind those. And then I have some panels ready to go in the two papers that I prefer to use when I use colored pencils. And that is the Strathmore colored pencil cardstock. It has a nice tooth to that. And then also I use the Strathmore mixed media if I'm going to use like, let's say Copics or watercolors with my pencils. So I like having all those things ready. So I just bring it up here up to my desk. I color, I put, you know, use what I need to put it right back. And then I have everything in one place and as you can see it doesn't take up a lot of space which for me is important because I have a small dedicated space so everything is in one place I don't have to go to five different places to get the paper or get the gamsol or get you know whatever so I love having like things together that you use together so that is what makes sense to me and I love this organizer for that purpose Let's go ahead and go to talk about inks. So I have my mini ink cubes right here in my little desk edition that is from Ikea. So I have all my little ink cubes in there. Next to that, in this 12 by 12 scrapbook case, I have all of my distress inks. They're all in rainbow order. And of course, they're labeled. and Behind each of them, I have a little space where I have the blending foam. So again, I don't have to look for the blending foam somewhere else. Each one has its own blending form in the little storage in the back. And I will link a video so you can see how I do that. And I do this for both my inks and my oxides. And it has been fantastic. 
my oxides are actually on the wall on these acrylic shelves and these shelves are from Amazon. They're meant to hold the Funko Pops, but I found another use for them and they're perfect this way because I use these more often. So I love having them out and ready to go. So there you can see they all have their own little pocket in the back for the blending foam and I love being able to see them and then have the tools right above again having things close and then I love how small and compact these are from Make It By Marco and I love again that I can see all the brushes I can take the whole thing to my work area and have all the brushes in front of me in a small space and when I'm done using them I can just put them back on the shelf. Now above the brushes, I have another acrylic shell and these house my Brush Marker Pro watercolor markers and then the bl detail blending brushes that I got from Amazon. And then next to that, I have this uh, organizer again. It's very old from Michaels and I, it holds all my distress um, stains that I never use <laughs> and then my Nuvo drops that I never use. Now these are super old. I don't think they make them anymore. They're called Viva Decor pens and they are so wonderful. They still work and I love them. And then next to that, I have all my stickles that I do love. And then below that, I have all my dis distress paints that I do use. And so I like having them so I can see the colors there. Uh, below that, I have my brushes that I use for different things. Right, are my really good watercolor brushes, and I absolutely love the silver black velvet. Here I have my mini ink blending tools, and then next to that are my little finger brushes for detail work. Let's go on to watercolors. So in this drawer, I have everything watercolor. So I have my watercolor palette at the top. Here on the right, I have my brush show powders and I have them set up the way uh, Sandy Alnock did. These are collapsible water bowls and so they can be for travel, but I use them all the time. I use one for clean water, one for dirty water. As you can see, they pop up and then they squish pretty flat. So I love how they're space saving. And then this is my water pal palette. Um, below that, I have all my fine tech and my starry colors, Gonsai Tombi with the swatches, of course, so I can see all the colors. So there they are. And then I have my watercolor palette there. Um, and then I have my Gonsai Tombi uh, watercolor pan right there. So I use this some of the time. I do like it. And then in the back, I have lots of sprays. So watercolor sprays like firework sprays. Um, I also have perfect pearl sprays and anything else that I would need in behind that. Like um, I also have, um, oh, I also have the shimmer sprays in this container. And then I have these really pretty uh, ink of gold. Um, like polishes they're super pretty and then I also have in the very left like my little bottles of Gamsol um, and then other things like this Dr. Peach Martin's white and Bombay white and Bombay black so different things like that that I would use for watercolor are all in here below that is where I have my markers so this drawer is all things markers these are some really cool metallic markers. I like to swatch things out. So here's what it looks like on black and on white. Um, these are calligraphy markers here. And then I have um, below that, I have the Sharpies in the regulars and then the extra fine. And I, then I have the Tombow markers. So I have them in this case. I have all the pens, you know, in the case so I can bring them all with me to my work table. And I have some other stuff, Crayola markers. I have some paint pens right there in the back. So, and then these are the distress markers that I never use. <laughs> so I should do de stash some of these things. So that's it for markers. All right, let's talk about papers that I like to use with all these coloring mediums. So as I mentioned before, I like the Strathmore Bristol Smooth for Zigs, Mohawk 110, 
for Copic coloring if I don't need to fussy cut. But if I need to fussy cut, then I'll go ahead and use the Nina 80 pound solar white. And then I also like to use the Canson XL for watercolor and the mixed media Strathmore if I'm combining like colored pencils and Copics or watercolor and pencils. Now this, I have different types of papers that I really like. So the Strathmore Tone Gray, the Strathmore Tone Tan, I love these with my pencils. It just gives it a different look. This is the Strathmore Mixed Media. And then this is a Strathmore Colored Pencil. And next I also have the Legion Stonehenge Cold Press Black watercolor paper which is so awesome with those fine tech they look absolutely amazing and then this is the montball watercolor paper so this is a nice um watercolor paper too this is the strathmore ready cut this is very nice paper too <laughs> this is the ranger watercolor paper um and then this is the bristol um smooth and then my absolute favorite watercolor paper is the Arch. Well, it's pronounced Arch, but everyone says Arches. <laughs> and I have both the hot press and cold press. I love those papers. All right, so finally, I will share my swatch book. So in this binder, I have all my coloring medium swatches. The very first thing you see is the Sandy Alnock text chart. I highly, highly recommend you get this if you use Copic markers. Now this is my own personal Copic color chart that I made for myself. So uh, this one's the Sandy Alnock one and that's colored in and this is the one I colored in. So I can see what colors maybe I wanna add. Um, this is also a freebie from Sandy Alnock. So you can kind of see different uh, skin tones, coloring skin tones. And then just different things that I've found from different people who's, you know, Copic coloring I like. Um, you know, I take whatever their suggestions are and I hold on to them. So that's what all these are. This is from Prismacolor. And then this is the Sandy Alnac Prismacolor hex chart. Again, if you use colored pencils, I highly recommend it. This is the one from Prismacolor. So that's the one I colored in. This is the Zig marker chart and this one I made myself. This is the one from Zig and then the rest of them are the Hero Arts ink swatches for my Hero Arts. This is Distress Ink, this is Distress Oxide and then these are my Intense Pencils and then these are Stampin' Up because I still have those. That's what I started with. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then all these I kind of just made myself. So that is it for how I organize all my coloring mediums. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I will be back with the next in the mini series and we will be talking all things paper. Until next time, bye. If you've missed anything from the mini series, I will link it right here. Bye.